Hey guys welcome back to another episode, in this video we will be going through our high probability head and shoulders trading strategy in depth, and how we use it in combination with price action. By the time you finish with this video, you will know exactly how to identify high probability head and shoulders patterns, as well as how to enter and exit the pattern to maximize your profits. If you want more videos more often please smash the like button, subscribe, and turn on the notifications bell, so that you know exactly when new content is released. A very important point before we start. Everything we discuss in this video can be used for currency trading, stock trading, and crypto, because price action stays relatively consistent across different assets, so we're going to go very in-depth in this video. Five simple powerful steps for how a smart trader approaches trading the head and shoulders pattern. The head and shoulders chart pattern is a popular and easy to spot pattern in technical analysis that shows a baseline with three peaks, the middle peak being the highest. The pattern appears on all time frames and can, therefore, be used by all types of traders and investors. Entry levels, stop levels, and price targets make the formation easy to implement, as the chart pattern provides important and easily visible levels. The head and shoulders pattern is believed to be one of the most reliable trend reversal patterns. Attributes of the head and shoulders pattern Before you can trade it, you must first know the key attributes of the pattern. That way you can easily spot the most favorable head and shoulders to trade. Now let's discuss each step in greater detail. Step 1. Uptrend. The very first part of a head and shoulders pattern is the uptrend. This is the extended move higher that eventually leads to exhaustion. As a general rule, the longer the uptrend lasts, the more substantial the reversal is likely to be. Step 2. Left shoulder. The market moves down to form a higher low. At this point, things are starting to come together, but we don't quite have enough to draw the neckline. Step 3. Head. Now that the left shoulder has formed, the market makes a higher high which forms the head. But despite the bullish rally, buyers are unable to make a substantially higher low. At this point, we have the left shoulder and the head of the structure. The neckline is also beginning to take shape, but we need the right shoulder before we can draw the neckline on our chart. Step 4. Right shoulder. The right shoulder is where things come together. It's an indication that buyers are tiring and that the market may be gearing up for a reversal. As soon as the right shoulder begins, we have enough to start plotting the neckline. But because the pattern isn't yet complete, it's best to think of it as a rough draft rather than a final version. Step 5. Neckline. The neckline is the level of support or resistance that traders use to determine strategic areas to place orders. To place the neckline, the first step is to locate the left shoulder head and right shoulder on the chart. In the standard head and shoulders pattern, we connect the low after the left shoulder with the low created after the head. This creates our neckline. We'll discuss the importance of the neckline in the following section. In an inverse head and shoulders pattern, we connect a high after the left shoulder with the high formed after the head, thus creating our neckline for this pattern. Note. Formations are rarely perfect, which means there may be some noise between the respective shoulders and head. Benefits of trading a head and shoulders pattern If you've been around the markets a while, you've probably learned about several chart patterns. You may even wonder which one you should focus on. So, let me say that the smartest pattern to trade is the one that stands out to you. It's the pattern your eye is drawn to and that you recognize. It could be a head and shoulders or any other number of patterns. But there are some benefits that come with the head and shoulders pattern. First, just about every professional trader will know what you're talking about with this pattern. That can make it easier to discuss it with your trading community. Sometimes you need a second opinion, whether that's in a trading chat room or on social media. Second, the head and shoulders pattern is found when there's a change in trend direction. If you know what you're doing, you can potentially find trade setups that meet solid risk reward criteria. The third reason for trading this pattern may be the best. It can help you figure out where place your entry, stops, and profit targets based on logical price movements. How to trade the head and shoulders pattern. 
Whatever chart pattern works for you, head and shoulders, bull flag, pennant, supernova, or anything else, it's important to have a process for every trading setup. Here are five simple and powerful steps for how a smart trader approaches trading the head and shoulders pattern. Step number one. Identify market trend. When you first look at a forex or stock chart, you want to determine whether the stock is uptrending, downtrending, or consolidating. Determining the trend early on can help you develop a game plan more quickly. You'll know roughly what the market's doing, plus it makes it easier to spot the low-risk trade setups. So, whatever you do, remember to determine the overall trend before anything else. Step number two. Before making any trades, it's important to let a head and shoulders pattern complete itself. If the pattern seems to be forming or is in the middle of forming, you shouldn't assume that it will fully develop and make trades based on what you believe is going to happen. Remember, trade what you see, not what you think. It's important that traders wait for the pattern to complete. This is so because a pattern may not develop at all or a partially developed pattern may not complete in the future. Partial or nearly completed patterns should be watched, but no trades should be made until the pattern breaks the neckline. So remember to watch trends as they develop and be patient. Try to avoid getting caught over anticipating. Step number three, trade the pattern. The trade can be initiated when the pattern completes. Plan the trade beforehand, writing down the entry, stops, and profit targets, as well as noting any variables that will change your stop or profit target. In the head and shoulders pattern, we are waiting for price action to move lower than the neckline after the peak of the right shoulder. For the inverse head and shoulders, we wait for price movement above the neckline after the right shoulder is formed. Another entry point requires more patience and comes with the possibility that the move may be missed altogether. This method involves waiting for a pullback to the neckline after a breakout has already occurred. This is more conservative in that we can see if the pullback stops and the original breakout direction resumes, the trade may be missed if the price keeps moving in the breakout direction. Step number four, placing your stop loss. The stop loss are placed just above the right shoulder after the neckline is penetrated. Alternatively, the head of the pattern can be used as a stop, but this is likely a much larger risk and thus reduces the reward to risk ratio of the pattern. In the inverse pattern, the stop loss is placed just below the right shoulder. Again, the stop loss can be placed at the head of the pattern, although this does expose the trader to greater risk. Step number five, setting your profit targets. The most common and often advised profit target is the distance between the head's peak and the neckline. And how does that translate in terms of risk reward ratio? Since our first or minimum profit target is the distance between the head's peak and the neckline, if we decide to use the conservative option for a protective stop, then we will have the same distance as a loss limit, thus, reducing our risk to reward ratio to 1 to 1. This is why, in order to improve that ratio, most experienced traders place their protective stops more often above the right shoulder's peak, given that they use the head to neckline profit target. However, the one thing that must always be true is a favorable risk to reward ratio. So always be sure to do the math before taking the trade. Here are other examples of head and shoulders strategy. Head and Shoulders Continuation Pattern Initially, I said that a head and shoulders is a reversal pattern, but not always the case. As with everything in trading, it depends on context. If the pattern looks very small compared to the price waves around it, it very well could be a continuation pattern. 
For example, if the trend is up, with big price waves to the upside, and then a very small head and shoulders forms, it is quite likely the price could continue higher overall, instead of reversing. One very important element to chart analysis is what I call velocity and magnitude. If you have big waves to the upside, and then small waves to the downside, that indicates that the trend is likely to continue higher. To reverse a trend, you need waves to the downside that are equal or greater in size than the up waves. So if you have big up waves, and then a little head and shoulders chart pattern, there is no power in the pattern to reverse the trend. It may, on occasion, or temporarily, but until we get big down waves, we must give respect to the uptrend and assume it is going to continue. The same is true of downtrends. If we have strong waves down, and then a small head and shoulders forms, it is quite likely that the price could keep heading lower. The small pattern doesn't show enough conviction on the part of the buyers to reverse the strong selling. As the pattern forms, it is more likely to eventually give way to more selling. Trading Rules There are no definitive rules for determining whether a head and shoulders is a continuation pattern or a reversal pattern. But in my experience, continuation patterns appear small relative to the price moves around them. The entire continuation pattern is more of just a sideways period, where the market takes a bit of a rest from the current trend, but then the trend continues. A reversal pattern is larger and more forceful. It shows an overall transition before uptrend to downtrend, or vice versa. Focus on the size of the waves in the pattern compared to the size of the waves in the trend preceding it. How to trade a continuation pattern. In this case, we can see strong downward movement heading into the pattern. The price forms the inverse head and shoulders, tries to go up, but quickly fails. There are multiple ways to get into this trade. One way would be to enter short when the price drops below the right shoulder low. A stop loss goes above the recent swing high. We are expecting the price to drop, and it will likely drop by the size of the pattern or more. So our first or minimum profit target is the distance between the head's peak and the neckline. Same thing if the trend is up. In this case, we have strong upward movement into a small head and shoulders. We are waiting for price action to move higher than the peak of the right shoulder. If the price starts rallying above the peak of the right shoulder, buy, and place a stop loss below the recent swing low. Our first or minimum profit target is the distance between the head's peak and the neckline. Here are other examples of head and shoulders continuation strategy. Head and shoulders is one of the most effective price action strategies you can use in the market. He system provide a method of trading the markets based on logical price movements. It's easy to spot the entry, stops, and profit targets, making it an effective strategy for beginners and professionals alike. As always, if you learned something new, or if you want more videos more often, make sure you subscribe, click the notification bell, and leave us a like to show your support. See you next time. Thank you.